Surf 102.5 Podcast. James Leeson, welcome to Surf 102.5. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. And you work with a foundation which really has been helping the community in quite a a major way. It's the SOS Foundation. What does that stand for? Sure. So SOS is called Scholars of Sustenance Thailand. It's a food rescue foundation that redefines how the food is distributed in order for us to address the food deficit uh, in this country. And also we want to provide nutrition to the people who need it. There are a lot of people who who are actually quite short of food. That's correct. And you know, a large percentage of the population don't even realize this. But what kind of activities are you involved with? I know you've been getting some support from some retail and from hotels, but tell me a little bit about the detail. Sure, our main program is called Food Rescue Program. It's a systematic approach in collecting good quality surplus food so that we can provide it to the people in need. So we send out our cooling trucks to different hotels, restaurants, supermarkets, uh, convenience stores, and other food manufacturers and companies, and we collect their surplus food, and then we deliver it straight to the people in need, to the vulnerable communities, to the disadvantaged groups in the, in the Thai society, seven days a week, no rest, both in Bangkok and in Phuket. So we have all these big brands in Thailand that helps us, you know, in providing us this good quality surplus food, and then we deliver it straight to the people in need. You don't give people leftovers. This is obviously fresh food you're giving. That's right. So from the hotels, we collect the cooked food from their buffet. Mm. So these are good quality food that were not even touched by by their customers. So we collect them. We also collect the bakeries that were not sold, uh, that are still good the next day. So we collect cooked food and bakeries from the hotels. And then from the supermarkets, we collect vegetables that are still good the next day, fruits that are still good the next day, which are needed for the nutrition of the people in need. And also some of the food, which is some packaging or last date of sell-by date, uh, some of that food is still quite good even after that date, isn't it? That's correct. You know, these companies provide expiration date. I think that this is just for the tracking purposes, just to see which ones could spoil very soon. But these are still good the next day or the next few days. So these packaged foods, uh, we still collect them. And then based on our food safety standards, because we have a food safety specialist in our organization, we do all these testings, we do all these inspections, and all of our food rescue ambassadors, those are the ones who's collecting all the food surplus food. They are well trained in terms of food safety, making sure that whatever food that we deliver are still good and safe for the people. You see, I didn't even know all this kind of thing was going on in Thailand. Is your foundation a local foundation or is it one that's been brought in from overseas? Right. So we started in 2016 and it it was established here in Thailand. It's been four years now that we have been collecting surplus food and last year we expanded in Phuket. And this year, we will be expanding in Wahin. And also, not only in Thailand, we're also doing this food rescue operation in Bali. And hopefully, very soon, we expand in Philippines and Cambodia as well, because we really want to address all this food issue, food security, food equity, and food waste. All of these are our missions and our targets for our foundation. You don't just work with retrieving and recycling food. Tell me a little bit about some of the other activities you're involved with. Sure. So aside from our food rescue program, we have different programs such as Rescue Kitchen Program, which cooks nutritious meals three to four times a week to feed different communities with nutritious food. We also have our food waste management program where we train and educate a lot of people on how to do composting so that, you know, there are a lot of food waste that can still be used in a different way instead of ending up in landfill producing all this methane gas, which is bad for the environment. And also we have uh, a food rescue learning program where we invite different students so that we can educate them on how to save the environment, how to avoid food waste, and all of these things because we believe that you know, our mission is not just you know, collecting surplus food, but 
educating the people as well. That's why our campaigns are all over social media, not just to tell what we do on a daily basis, but to tell how can you help individually, as a group, as a family, or as a business to eliminate food waste in this country. And what kind of response have you had from schools? From schools, they're very responsive. They really want to understand how to do this. Some of the lecturers, they're really approaching us to see how we can collaborate so that they can educate their students. We get a positive response from the students. We have Shrewsbury International Schools, Romerdy International School. We have some international schools approaching us, providing us uh, surplus food, and at the same time collaborating with different programs to educate their students. So it's very nice. And you're working with the Sang Foundation in Hua Hin. How is that going and what kind of activities are you involved with there? Sure. So Sang Foundation, just a little bit backstory. Uh, last July, they approached uh, Scholars of Sustenance and asked if we can extend our program in Wahi. Because when the COVID happened, they w since March, they were distributing relief packages to many vulnerable communities in Wahine. And they've seen it from their eyes how many people are struggling with food at the moment because a lot of people lost their jobs. So they asked us, can, can you extend this uh, program to Wahine? Because their relief package is not for long term. It's not the most sustainable one. It's a very expensive program and it's hard to sustain that. And they saw that this program is something that is good to sustain uh, over the longer term over right? the longer yeah. term that's correct right. we wanted to say yes immediately but you know we don't have funds to start to expand a program in another city or in another location so we decided to collaborate and come up with a fundraising event which we did last sunday so that we can raise funds so that we can start this operation we can buy a second hand truck maybe or all the things needed for this operation to start and now sound foundation and sos will be working together to make this happen very soon so obtaining food that you can recycle must be quite an incredible job really so how do you actually go about that Sure. So like what I said, so when our food rescue ambassador ambassadors drive our cooling trucks, our refrigerator trucks, and collect the food from those different uh, sources of surplus food, so they collect and bring it to our truck, they weigh it, because we collect the data, we collect the numbers, and they separate it. And then they divide it based on the number of communities that we will distribute on that day. Mm. So, and then... Uh, they deliver to the recipients where we coordinate with different community leaders. And the reason why we have very selected uh, recipients is because we're very particular about the communities that are really struggling in food. We, we really spend time in understanding and doing some research on these communities, how many elderly people, how many people lost their jobs, how many disabled people, because these are the communities that you really want to serve. I know there are some communities that are struggling, but they can still manage on their own. But there are communities that are really struggling in terms of finding jobs, you know, the neglected ones, the neglected communities, the disadvantaged ones, the refugee play, uh, people. Uh, we haven't access to those communities. So all of the surplus food are, you know, done in a systematic way so that we can provide specific nutritional needs of those communities. So we know if they need more protein, if they need more carbohydrates, if mm. they need more fats, you know, we, we segregate, we sort out, and then we deliver it based on their need. So we can really address the nutritional issues of each communities. What about actually getting food supplies? Are all hotels... For example, in Hua Hin, is it difficult to get cooperation out of some of the hotels and restaurants and places to donate food? Right. I think our advantage at this point is that we have established ourselves with these big hotel chains. Yeah. So when we approach them and ask, hey, we're opening in Hua Hin, would you be able to support us? They immediately said yes. They're more than willing to help. They want to they wanna know when are we going to start. Mm. The only issue is not many hotels at the moment are open or operating like what they're operating before. Right. So some of them are not doing buffets. Some of them are not really opening some of their restaurants. So there's a limitation on the amount of surplus food that we can cook. 
collect. So that's the challenge at the moment. That's why our main focus right now is more on the retail industry, the supermarkets, because they have enough food for us to feed some commu- a lot of communities. And the know, likes you know. of Tesco and Tesco, Big C. Big C. Are they know. cooperating? Yes. You know, since we started, Tesco has been our number one supporter. They started with us. So, and now we have all the big brands, Big C, S, uh, S&P, Tesco, uh, Tops, CP has also joined us recently. So these are the big companies who are helping us to provide food to the people in need. And you're just setting up office in Hua Hin. Do you need help with that at all? Or are you looking for some things? That's a good question, Richard. It's a loaded question because I know that you're not. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, we really need a lot of things in Hua Hin. No, setting up an office is, you know, it's not very cheap. It requires a lot of things as simple as laptop for our staff, computers or printers, you know, or even, you know, some cleaning stuff. You know, we, ha- we need a stainless, you know, dishwashing area so that we can clean all our food containers. Uh, we also need to buy those food containers because we're very particular in food safety and we have a very specific food, food container that we use. We also need baskets for our cooling tracks to use in picking our food. So we need a lot. We, we need, we need uh, a, a cooling refrigerator to stock some of the food that we can deliver to the communities next day. So there's, there's a lot of items there. We don't have a desk. We don't have an office chair for our staff. You know, all those things. It's a bare office. We don't have anything, but mm. if anyone is willing to donate, uh, we're more than willing to talk to you and discuss about it. What's the best way to contact you? Our Facebook page is called Scholars of Sustenance Thailand, and you can find the contact information as well there. Thank you so much for talking. It's been terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Surf 102.5 Podcasts.